Hi guys, it's Nana Foxy Mama 365. I'm back again with the Real Housewives of Potomac season five, episode thirteen. No show and showdowns. Before I start, I would still want to commiserate with Nigerians. We still continue to fight. Hashtag enough is enough. And police brutality and SARS. Period. No going back. Okay, let's kick kick it off. Um. Giselle is wedding ring shopping, is ring shopping actually with Juan and while she's doing that before Juan gets in she's get to letting Jamal her man know that yeah we're heading to the altar and she wants this kind of ring and it's gonna be double for her troubles if it was five carats before now she wants ten carats okay Jamal okay I really don't know what's going on in that relationship anyway we'll get back to that so anyway she's wedding ring shopping with the uh, for 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 her friend Robin and she's with with Robin's man and they're getting into it. One is like okay, he's he's he's, he's thinking about something in the range of ten thousand dollars and they find this some they find this really cute ring. It's meant to symbolize uh, forever. I think it's called mono oh, whatever it is. Anyway, so they're picking a nice ring because they say Robin is a simple girl, but she's giving them a kind of hint as to what she wants. So yeah, so hopefully she likes the ring and it's within his budget, so it's kind of looking good. Moving on. <sighs> Candice is still lamenting. I really just can't with Candice. Anyways, before we get to why is Candice lamenting? Wendy's having an event. Wendy's wine, wine with Wendy, and she's inviting some of the ladies for over for wine and talking about the 2020 election, which is coming up in about a week, pretty much ten days from now, actually, or nine days from today, in America. So she's going to be inviting most of the ladies, but she's not, of course, going to be inviting Monique. So she has gets to talking with Candace, and she says, "Well, I'm not inviting Monique. How are you doing? I'm checking on you as my friend." Whew. Candy girl just can't help herself. She goes into oh how you know she's you know really scared sometimes and she has to check in on herself and how Monique's luck is using her her what did she call them her people online to come after her and they've been saying all kinds of things and Monique has been liking their tweets because somebody said yeah pow pow <laughs> Candy's girl you still haven't learnt your lesson that's just the, that's just a fact you still haven't learnt your lesson you're still acting like oh yeah you know you still you running your mouth and there have been consequences and you still haven't learned anyways i can't <sighs> the grand dame and her man are going to therapy and i'm totally excited and happy to see them do this not excited about their issues no but i'm happy to see black people you know understand how important it is that therapy is actually a good thing as against most black people will say oh you just talk about it with your mama or talk about it with your sister or family member or brother or something no because by doing that yeah you can obviously lean on them sometimes for support but it's not probably a ideal to share everything in your marriage with people that you know love you as much because most of the time they're going obviously people that love you want the best for you so sometimes they're going to be biased and you really don't want that bias to continue to linger on after things have been resolved you know uh so i would say to people especially black people go into therapy if you need it because obviously the therapist will be equipped to help to listen and usually wants both people's successes and uh, pretty much is equipped to do that so pretty much they're talking about what's been going on and kudos to Ray being able to say to Karen I appreciate you thank you for supporting me you know whether it's financially being there with the kids just being there you know is support and even being here too you know shows that Karen wants to be here so kudos to Ray for you know bringing that I don't know why that is so such a struggle for men to say to their ladies you know like the women just soldier up and know okay you know what I got to hold my man down and most of the time black women do that without even being asked so it from time to time it'd be nice for the men to appreciate us and say thank you period you know so Ray is having some issues now kind of um with Karen's success, how is he able to deal with that? Because all the while, it had been the Ray train, okay? And now he is Miss, Mr. Karen Huger. So he's kind of, he has to just learn to adapt. And it's not a big deal. 
you know, go and figure out your friends, get into golfing, you know, enjoy your li your life, you know, and support her. Get, you know, once in a while, go out with her and be seen to be with her. Moving on. Ooh, child. Giselle is dropping Jamal back off at the airport and they get to have him a tete a tete. So Giselle at this point is saying, you know, all this while it's been about me and wanting my space and wanting my freedom. But you know what? Now I'm coming to that place where I want it to be an us thing. Pretty much that's what she's letting Jamal know. And you can see why she likes this guy. You can see that Jamal, the way he, you know, he listens and he actually heard her and said, oh, you know what? You're, not, you're no longer the same lady I met 10, 20 years ago. You're, you're a different person right now. And I can see that finally you are there. And I'm happy to tell you that I'm also there. I really hope this relationship, you know, there have been a lot of, you know, people have, uh, people have said so many things. Another woman came out of the wood. I don't know if it was one of the other baby mamas. But there has been so much. I, I honestly, with this relationship, I just want to watch it unfold. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> yes, I ain't shit. <laughs> no, no, stop. Stop. I ain't saying nothing, okay? Okay? I'm just going to watch this relationship unfold. Only because... You know, her dad and the kids too all kind of being are not really there on this relationship. So we have to just watch it and see. I honestly, I ain't saying nothing, okay? Mm -mm. I ain't saying nothing. So Monique is having an event. She's doing this her Not For Lazy Mom event. Uh, of course, she hasn't sold that many tickets and she's hoping more people will show up. Otherwise, it's going to come out of her pocket for the food and all of that. The thing is, Monique. What is not for lazy moms? If you know what it is, please kindly drop down, drop down in, in, the, in the comment section so I know. Because I'm literally clueless as to what it is. It's a podcast about what? Like, even the title, I'm like, what is not for lazy moms? Like, what does that mean? Anyways, she's having this event. <laughs> And they're going to be allowed to ask her all kinds of questions, you know, but she's not going to talk about the altercation that happened between herself and Candice. Just before the event starts, she gets to talking with Ashley, who lets her know, yeah, that the grand dame <laughs> has been a little shady. <laughs> and she lets her know that, yeah, Karen was actually the one that was urging, uh, uh, yeah, egg, whatever, that word, egging <laughs> Ashley on to go and put out a lawsuit on her and monique is like what what yeah so she's kind of surprised because she's she's always felt karen was on her side and I, and in my mind i'm thinking karen is like look i'm trying to walk a fine line here i'm not on your side but and i'm not on your side both of you are my friends uh, i totally get it and i i think it's unfair for for any for friends of mine to come at me and say, oh, you must be on my side or you must hold her account. I'm like, miss me with that bullshit. You guys are adults, right? You guys can settle your issues, right? Without having me take sides. I, because I've been there. I've been there where I'm like, okay, you know what? You know, da, 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 da. And then when they make up, guess what? They're going to use you and say, oh, you said this about that one. And that one's going to say, oh, she said, uh -uh. Uh -uh. count me out okay you got me count me out i ain't there not me you know so i totally understand where karen is coming from however asking candace to take up a lawsuit probably was must have gone too far but we'll see how it how it goes down uh moving right along one is gonna ask for robin's hand in marriage again from robin's parents i know robin's parents have said they should go into counseling and they're not really sure about this whole situation only if you know they can they've been able to kind of like talk to each other and gotten over the hump which was the financial situation so robin first of all lets them know that yeah she has another issue again with the irs and hopefully she's going to be able to resolve it soon and that is probably what's going to hold up their buying a house together um, so yeah, her parents are obviously going to worry about them because this is not the first time they're having financial issues. So hopefully Robin can get this together. So one uses this opportunity as well when Robin has gone to the bathroom to let, let the kids know and Robin's parents and pretty much ask for her hand again in marriage that he wants to propose to her. And I like kind of like how one is like, I'm not really asking, I'm just letting you know. Is that okay, right? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much how one got about it. 
Wendy's event. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Wendy is asking all the other ladies to come. Oh yeah, before that, Monique was a little upset at, at Karen because Karen didn't show up for her event. So Monique was lamenting about that. But and she said, Oh, she'll always be at Karen's event, pregnant and all. So we'll see. Wendy's event, Wendy's obviously not gonna have Monique there because she's like, no, Monique. And I'm thinking, Wendy, what's your own? What did concern you? How did it concern you? I beg, carry yourself. You know, like, you're fighting the... Yeah, I get it that Candice is your friend. Candice brought you on. So you have a, you should support her. However, you're riding too hard. You're riding this this thing too hard. Just my opinion. Okay? So, it's, it looks like it's a great event. Talking about how women can pretty much use, hold, use their voices, to, you know, to be... Uh, to hold their people, their legislators accountable. And so she gives a great example. What are the issues that we have as black women? How can we come together and make our voices heard? So it was a great, I think it was a great show, um, event. You know, it was kind of, it was very, I thought it was interesting, you know, and see, and to also to see, uh, seeing Wendy in her element was kind of, was really refreshing and to see how, whoa, you know, it kind of like gives people a, a sense of, uh, respect for who Wendy is and I run I really would rather Wendy showed us this aspect of her more of this pretty much <sighs> After the event Of course they get to talking at the table Once again Monique comes up. Oh Yeah, everybody's like yeah, they don't really a few of them are saying obviously they don't really think Monique has is, has you know obviously Robin thinks Monique cannot just you know, hasn't really learned her lesson and just in two weeks hasn't changed. And of course, Monique is also saying, girl, you want me to change? Well, how am I going to show you that I'm making this change? I'm trying to apologize. You know, I really wanted to apologize. But anyway, I'm taking back. I'm going to keep my apology now since the girl is suing me. You know, <laughs> I totally get that. But anyways, ladies are talking and Ashley's saying she's not just blindly supporting Monique. She says, oh, well, when that whole thing happened in her house last year with Mike squeezing people's guys' butts. <laughs> Monique and her husband chose to not get messy about it and just, you know, kept mute. Pretty much they didn't say anything. So I think the ladies are like, that's a low standard. And I get that. That's a low standard to hold someone to say, oh, the person didn't lie. No, you are expected to not lie. Okay? Yeah. However, you can just say, look, I just believe that I can ride with Monique and that is that. She might have done something wrong, but, you know, all of us ganging up against her, how is that going to help? Pretty much that is it. Then, of course, Karen's situation comes up. Wendy had spilled to Giselle that during the drinking sprout in Monique's house, I, and, I, and I cut that, I really did. When Monique, no, Karen had said, the grand dame had told them that, oh, she has given half of her money to Ray to help him, you know, get out, to build him out of the situation, his financial situation, a, a few years ago. Now, she didn't say anything, we didn't hear anything about wanting the money back. Which is why I'm saying Giselle is so messy. Giselle is saying, oh, that is strange. And she's letting all the other ladies know. Like, I'm thinking, Giselle, if Karen was your friend, you wouldn't bring this to the other ladies. After Wendy told this to you, you should have picked up the phone and said, hey, girl, did you know you said this? How are you doing? Yeah, it's good you stood by your man, you know, and I'm always going to be here for you. Period. Click, and it shouldn't come up again. Messy Giselle, once again, is like, oh, she's going to be here for her friend. You're going to be here for your friend, and you're telling all the other ladies before you have even spoken to your friend about it, and you're going to talk to your friend about it in front of the cameras. Girl, but Giselle, you are just so messy. Like, I just, I just can't with Giselle. Anyway, she's letting the other ladies know that there must be something wrong. Karen is in her feelings. She wants the money back because she gave the money to, she lent, she gave half of her money to her man. And she's talking to strangers about it. That is Wendy. <laughs> it's something like maybe, yeah, something like, you know, like it came up. Like, I don't even think most of the ladies even heard it. Like, I'm sure Monique and Ash, I think it was Monique, Ashley. Yeah, it was Monique, Candice. Karen and Wendy that were there. I'm not even sure the other ladies caught on. Anyways, we'll see. Wendy's event, at this point, Candice is going to have a word, a tete a tete with the grand dame. She's taking Karen down so then they're going to talk. And she's saying, yeah, she doesn't understand why Karen is kind of on Monique's side, that she's really not being her friend. 
and Karen is saying girl bye nope that's not the situation the real situation is you are very brilliant you have a lot of power in your mind however your mouth too has a lot of power behind it and i totally agree and i'm happy that karen is able to say this to candace hopefully candace will actually get it and understand the power of the tongue you know like telling ashley that oh you're married ashley saying oh i'm married to a millionaire why do i need to get paid for you know to decide to side monique and she's like, oh, yeah, you're not, not, not for long. You won't be married to him for long. And you're like, girl, you want to get popped again? You just can't be spilling all this garbage and then think there will never be consequences. That's why you got bopped. And now you're like, oh, you're going to see a therapist. He's still so traumatized. Every day you got to put post it. Come on, girl, bye. Okay? Okay? Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Anyways, Candy says she's not going to be bullied and they ain't going to change her mind. At this point, of course, Mr. Sifo, Wendy comes in and she's like, yeah, you haven't really helped Monique. That she wants to hear Monique say this and Monique say, yeah, I'm really sorry. And I'm like, girl, bye. It's not your place to make another person. If the girl is not ready, honestly, you could tell that the, the, at the last meeting that he had when Monique was there, Monique was not ready to apologize. Listen, if they had put Monique and, Can and Candice in the same room, probability is that Monique would have gone at her again. Okay? She just wasn't project at that time but later on we see monique sitting down with her pastor and literally crying and saying hey candace didn't deserve this i'm going to pick up the phone and i'm going to call her however a lawsuit was has hit and at this point she's like girl you know what mm -mm, i think I'm, i better hold on to my apology you know and you know let's what what is going on here so that's pretty much what we're going to you know but we left off with that whole situation of the ladies trying to make karen uh accountable and karen saying no girls I am the grand dame and I am who I am and you are not going to make me change my mind or make me say something I don't want to say. Point blank. Period. Okay. <laughs> oh child. So of course Wendy's going off and all of that and they get into a little little spout and all of that. But hopefully, you know, we're going to see what, where this goes. That now people, allergen, allergencies are, are, are being formed and um, we'll see what happens next week. I'm looking forward to this. But anyways, Candice is hugging, hugging Wendy so close. We'll see how long this relationship lasts. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to share, be sure to like. And what, you haven't subscribed? Be sure to subscribe. Thanks.